Ed, there's increasing conversation down in the U.S. about an, an looming energy emergency. Essentially, uh, electricity demand is roaring ahead, particularly in places like Texas, and the power generation in the system just can't keep up. How bad is it? Well, uh, listening to the lieutenant governor uh, just this week, uh, he's terrified. Uh, in his uh, announcement, he said he was uh, shocked at the uh, forecast that ERCOT, uh, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, had, had presented. Uh, it would be almost a, a doubling of daily supply capacity, uh, daily demand. And, of course, the grid's not quite positioned to, to take that on yet. You know, ERCOT itself doesn't make investments. Uh, it can, with the Public Utility Commission, add transmission lines pretty much at will. And of course, that adds to the existing consumers' bills. But building the new generation is is got to coming uh, at a cost. Um, the thing that's kept Texas going wonderfully well the last two years, uh, the incredible expansion of wind and solar, uh, well ahead of California now. Um, and now we're as of last night, a little over 14,000 megawatts of battery discharge capacity that probably with an average discharge of about two hours, um, uh, but enough to to kind of smooth over some of the, the afternoon and, and, and evening um, uh, switching, you know, to avoid California's duck curve. Right. And um, Texas is not alone. And it seems to be that there are uh, areas where, you know, growth is around 3%, 4%, maybe 5%. And then there are areas that are uh, maybe even 10% or 14%. And Texas, with its uh, AI and data centers, electrification, reshoring of industry, LNG, California's expanding uh, rapidly, parts of the, the Northeast. Does that present a, a problem for grid planners with when the the increase in demand is asymmetrical like that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, the U.S. has really done nothing to increase the supply, the, the portfolio of power plants over the last three decades. And, and now we've reached a situation where decay and attrition amongst the portfolio fleet and increasing demand from consumers for any reason, uh, we've hit the wall. And that's driving up the the electricity rates across the nation. You know, in addition to the fact that the price of natural gas is up about 25, 30% over the last year, uh, the tariffs on steel, so everything having to do with transmission and uh, uh, distribution is a problem. But this is a big issue. Uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission issued um, an advisory notice this uh, last week stating that they were looking to to push through uh, uh, new transmission projects. Uh, the states have objected to this tremendously, but this is a directive coming straight from the, the Trump administration. The, you just had some uh, elections down there and where uh, electricity pricing actually played a, a fairly big role in election campaigns. Yes, that that's true. This was the not only an off-year election, but it was an off-off-year election, if you will. And I, I'm sure it made a difference. Uh, it's going to make a larger difference during the midterm elections, uh, which are you know we're rolling into with the primary season in the spring. Uh, you know, the U.S. is not one grid. It is a, a compilation, a, a confabulation of a lot of different uh, operating entities, uh, more than 3,500 individually owned entities kind of make up the electricity delivery system in the U.S. And, uh, you know, to say that it's like herding cats, uh, it, it really disparages cat herders because, yeah, this is, they, they're all independent. They're all working on their own profit motives or or welfare motives. You know, some have reliability first and foremost. Some have cheapness first and foremost. And the the local elected officials are the ones that take the heat, will pay the cost um, at re-election time if the price goes up three or four or five cents per kilowatt hour. But we're seeing the price go up 10 cents a kilowatt hour in some areas. 
Uh, that's astonishing. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, three years ago, when I had these conversations with you and other American experts, we would often contrast what I saw that at that time as the dynamism of the American model uh, reacting to technological change and, and increasing demand and almost being a better model compared to the Canadians where, you know, we have 10 provinces and only one market like Texas, the rest are all crown corporations, you know, government owned utilities that are integrated monopolies. They control everything from generation down to distribution. And I, and that we saw those, as, I saw those as, you know, slow moving, cautious dinosaurs. On the other hand, now, you know, they're beginning to respond to the same pressures that we're seeing in the US but it looks like that it might actually be the better model. Is there any analogy in the U.S. where you see those kinds of, you know, statewide utility monopoly, something like that, that's doing a better job? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a huge concentration of data centers in Virginia, um, first of all, because Washington's there. But second of all, the electricity market is an integrated market. And so we've seen these these integrated utilities that are operated under government oversight. Uh, they have been the ones that have been able to accommodate uh, uh, growing demand simply because they weren't uh, restricted and, and by the so-called deregulation efforts across the United States. Uh, those weren't deregulation. That was just different regulation, re-regulation. And so these utilities are better situated to respond. They actually have some spare operating capacity because they plan for reliability issues. Um, this, the grid such as in ERCOT, uh, Texas, um, uh, California, where the power plants are essentially merchant providers. You know, think of them as individual farmers trying to gauge what the the appetite's going to be for for bell peppers or or kohlrabi or uh you know almonds and then dealing with the vagaries of of not being able to earn a rate of return um the easiest the easiest uh approach to uh, firing up electricity across the u.s would be natural gas fire generators uh, that's what the president talked about at the pennsylvania energy summit uh, 12 weeks ago, uh, but there's such a backlog of, of these power plants that have been ordered, they're not going to get to market in time. So we're looking at the solar and the wind as providing the, the, the fastest to market, especially solar, along with batteries. One of the issues that's come up over and over again is what's being called a uh, policy drift and uh, regulatory reform lag. You know, it's just, we've got all these new technologies. We've got rapidly increasing demand. We've got uh, new load centers like uh, AI data centers that are just exploding all over the place. And it seems like the regulatory regime and the policy framework just is not keeping up. Is that a federal issue or is that a state issue? Well, it's, it's certainly a state issue in Texas uh, and across a number of the states. Many are, are puzzling how in the world are we going to be able to accommodate this growth? And some of them are actually asking the question, do I want to accommodate this growth? Uh, data centers are resource intensive. They use an awful lot of water for cooling. And that's going to strain aquifers and water supplies across the nation. They don't provide a lot in the way of new employment. They don't provide a lot in the way of, of new tax base either. It's simply an electricity arbitrage, if you will. They can they can buy electrons for less than they can sell them. Uh, and, and we know that because, well, anybody who subscribes to Alexa, subscribes to Siri, is is paying for those electrons to come back with more information than them, than, um, uh, uh, they went out with. Ed, uh, fascinating insights into this. We're going to, I'll be coming back to you, I'm sure in the coming months, to talk about this emergent, you know, energy emergency in the U S to see if it actually rolls out the way folks are worrying that it will and, you know, cause major, uh, economic problems and so on. So thank you very much for this. It's, it's very dynamic. And, and I want, want to recall Stephen Hawking's last prediction, which was the, you know, mankind is going to fry itself with electricity usage. On that cheery note, thank you.